you know what it's like inside the mind of a champion? I'm Matt with Armadillo Marino. Today I'm joined by Tashi and Nungshi Malik, who recently took part in the world's toughest race, Eco Challenge, Fiji. Obviously sported Armadillo Marino socks and base layers through the whole experience. So join us as we go through episodes one to three, find out just how underprepared these women were. We didn't even have the right gear. And why we got reactions like this and this. Make sure to hit that subscribe and bell button so that you know when we drop the next video. Let's get things started. Tashi Nungshi, could you just give us a quick introduction? Hi everyone, I'm Nungshi, that's Tashi Nash and Tash. Uh, we are Guinness record holders for being the first twins and siblings to have completed what's known as the Explorer's Grand Slam, which includes climbing the tallest peaks in every continent and skiing to the North and South Pole. Well, last year, the two of us had the opportunity to represent our country in Eco Challenge, the world's toughest race, which is premiering on Amazon. You know, being absolute rookies in adventure racing, the outcome was a miracle. And I do hope you all get to watch the show. Yeah. yeah I know everyone in the audience would have just been like, obviously, standard Bear Grylls style coming in on a helicopter. What at this point, like, you know, you've seen him land on a helicopter, like, at this moment in time, you've not even seen the map. Like, where are your minds? What are your mindsets, Sal? Like, what are you thinking? Wow, there was a lot <laughs> of emotions, and uh, I, my heart was actually racing, and I, my ears were ringing. At the time, I don't think I was fully aware of the fact that I was alive and I was breathing. Yeah. Everything just started to become, like, numb all of a sudden, and my ears are ringing, and I was like, okay, this is the moment. I had butterflies, and suddenly Bear is, like, about to, and I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> am I ready for this? Am I ready? Oh, yes, I am ready. And then he suddenly <laughs> amazed me up, and I'm like, Holy oh moly, God. this couldn't be more disastrous. <laughs> it was from the east of Fiji to the west of Fiji, the entire length and breadth. And I'm like, I think wow. everybody's face, like jaws just dropped. Like you could see it on the team's faces. Like we were all like so excited seeing Bear. And then suddenly they unveiled the map and we all go like, oh, like what just happened? Like, is that the route to the race? And we all were like, so damn. <laughs> you see the map, obviously all of that's going through your mind. Are you still incredibly happy that you decided to take on this race at this point you're like oh really yeah like we knew this was happening for real like we were a part of an adventure race like it was in the moment so it was not like you know we'd look at the map and be like oh no it's we time to like quit. we want to quit no 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 that's not happening we want to actually endure and see how much of that can we actually do so it was more like wow this looks amazing it almost felt like an amazing adventure race to be honest like yes. You see the map and you're like, yeah, we're going for a real adventure now. But also like, you know, whenever you see like a zoomed out uh, picture of anything, you think it's, it's doable, right? Until and unless you get to the course and you start it, you're kind of like a playing Russian roulette. You're like, maybe this is my thing, maybe not, but we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. So I think we were still in that zone and maybe yeah. we were just numb or subconscious throughout. Like we didn't know what to expect and we didn't know that the first leg itself is going to entail 65 kilometers of sailing and then hiking and then mountain biking. Some of the domains that we were terrible at. So mm -hmm. how did you, so you've obviously seen that. That must have been dawning in its own right. Like how do you kind of overcome that? How do you go, right, well, that was, that was scary, now I've got to go do this thing. Well, I think it was that moment, you know, when he opens the map and that, that uh, you know, the jaw-dropping moment for every team. But then later we were like pretty pumped because we had other team members who were kind of there, like from other teams. So we knew we had like a support, like yeah. everybody was going to go through it. So I think it was mentally very easing, uh, you know, just to realize that it's not just us who's here. You have 300 athletes out there and they are pretty pumped. So, you know, this is our moment to stay positive and just go with the flow. So I think it's just having that backing. Yeah, for us, like quitting was just not an option. And we just like, for us, wherever we went was yeah. going to be, uh, you know, our progress, our uh, ability to give it our best to the point that we went. And so we just like wanted to see that aspect, like how much can we endure uh, the race? Like how much of it can we endure? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, you were definitely, you know, you're definitely going to get tested in this situation. Like that. So <laughs> Look at that point. moment. And then, <laughs> holy moly, we were all so excited. Wow. And he gives his speech, doesn't he? He gives a speech about what's important to survive the wilderness and what's important during the race. And he spoke about teamwork and never underestimate nature and uh, go there with an open mind and heart. But remember, nature is always evolving. And so are this, you know, the conditions. So yeah. It's like nothing is stationary. And so be ready, prepared to deal with that. You'll have bad weather days, you'll have good weather days. Yeah. 
just it enjoy you feel, did you feel more or less concerned after bear did his speech and he was like this is going to be really difficult <laughs> well <laughs> i think it happened before we got to the, the the start line of this race when bear met us in nandi at the at the hotel i remember he just came you know back from a recce of the of the trail that we were all going to you know embark on and he said you know what girls this is like jurassic park when he yeah. said that we were like i was like okay the chances yeah. of us uh, completing or even getting on the, the getting past the first leg is is slim yeah but he also said that i know that you girls are strong and you've got a solid team so we'll see what happens i was like okay so we <laughs> have a little bit of faith there uh, we still have what it takes to maybe do something good in the eco challenge so so no that's that's really good and obviously he plays through the map he goes does a speech and i think kind of after this point he tells everybody you got blisters that you're going to get blisters did you guys get blisters you're obviously repping the socks so obviously no, we tried you know very hard to protect our feet uh, because we'd heard of previous eco challenge uh, races you know yeah. there's some of their uh, uh, take away on the, the last the last uh, eco challenge yes. fiji the previous 2002 fiji was that a lot of people suffered feet injury mm -hmm. and uh, some of the blisters just turned nasty and not treating them especially when you're doing yeah. the water legs uh, where your you know your feet is exposed to water constantly and then you don't have any moment to dry it even a small uh, infection yeah actually has led team to drop out even a simple thing like a you know an infected foot mm -hmm. so you cannot take Underest yeah underestimate the, the 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 challenge that can emerge out of this race and feet particularly because everything you know you kind of rely on your feet for yeah. everything you do it's like okay so we're going to look after it and armadillo socks helped us <laughs> we used them for the first time the merino socks and they yeah, proved is. our best friends and we had one of the best feet by the way in eco challenge so thanks armadillo there you go <laughs> Good in the, the most extreme conditions, which is nice to hear. So, I mean, actually, like, going after that, you know, we're sort of heading off, you've had the speech, the next yeah. bit, the next dramatic bit, and this uh -huh. bit, you know that everyone, you know, everyone watching, myself included, would have seen this and just been like, wow, that is mad. <laughs> yeah, so the boat's setting off, but it looked chaotic. It really just, it looked insane. But, like, at this point, you're getting in your boats, what's going through your heads, how are you feeling? We were enjoying that first section. We were like, okay guys, this is fun. Like we are finally a part of the race, you know? Like, it's yeah, exciting. Absolutely. Yeah, and the further we went, I think uh, in the Damakas, we realized that teams were capsizing. You know, there was this whole rush to get to the first point. And what was woo! it, what was going through your head? So you are seeing teams capsizing and one of the teams that capsized was like Team New Zealand, like one of the top defenders, yeah. yeah? What's going through your head? You've just seen these guys capsize. <laughs> we're like, oh shoot, if that would have been us, we would have lost everything. Yeah, but our morale it. would have been so down. Yeah. If that happened to us, our morale would be so low that we would probably yeah. want to just quit midway, you know. <laughs> uh, but thankfully, it was not us. So our, you know, our strategy was kind of like, you know, the, the sprinter, not even the sprinters, I think the, the, mm -hmm. the relay guys on a track field. What they do is they start off a little late, but then eventually they work their way in. And we Warm were kind up. of like that. We were warming up. <laughs> We were like, okay, we'll take it nice and easy and then eventually speed up. Whereas the others saw it like a sprint, you know, like some of the teams around us, they were like, oh, we got to get out of this. Like, there was chaos everywhere. Like yeah. you could just hear athletes scream, you know, like curse somebody and curse them. Like just the course, like it was just like so chaotic. Very chaotic. Well, people we couldn't even hear stuff. each other. So what's that? People were shouting at each other, were they? They were like, so kicking off, get out of my way kind of thing. Is that yeah, what you're saying? Yeah, it was like, hey, do this right, hey, do that right. We shouldn't capsize, you know. It was just like all over the place. Now, oh, those teams are going ahead. We need to catch up. Like, it was just like so many noises at the same time. <laughs> and I think there were, there were moments where we were listening to the other team members and thinking it was our team. So we were kind of reacting to the response of other teams, yeah. not realizing that it's not our team. Yeah. So they're like, hey, paddle fast. It's somebody else calling it out. <laughs> but we're like, okay, yeah, sure. Paddle, but we're like, oh, oh, that's the other team. No, no, no. Calm down. It's not, it's not team. I think the start yeah. was very chaotic, chaotic, no doubt. You know, because oh. this was the first time we were uh, embarking on a race of this magnitude. We, I remember like everything being rigged, right? Our bags and everything. But when we launched ourselves in the water, I was like, you know what? Now we are grounded. Because we don't have anything accessible, like we can't reach for a sunscreen or, or water, water or water. And if we do, everything is going to fall out. And then we started to worry about those things. Within like five minutes into the race, we were like, how do we undo the bag to grab a bottle of water? Because the other teams were very clever in the sense that they had all the essentials like hooked on and they had it like in front of them 
easily accessible. But for us, we were just understanding the course as well. So we were kind of worried about the, you know, the, the, the untying of the, the bags and things falling out of the water and how will we manage this. And if you look at it, it's really narrow. It looks awesome and fancy, but that tamaka is freaking narrow yeah. and there's no place to paddle. So <laughs> I don't know, I had mixed emotions. It's astounding that you had never paddled before. You got yeah. onto that boat and then you're having to navigate for 11 straight hours, yeah? Hours. Like, that's insane. And you're saying that like, on the boat, I'm interested to know what the, the dynamic was on that boat, because 11 hours is a long time to spend with someone, and then spending it paddling with them as well. Like, there's, you know, a few arguments there, and like a bit of, bit of fun. You, you guys trying to have a bit of a laugh and keep your, your morale up, like, or were you just sharp and broke? You know, I'm like sweating right now. Like just thinking about that moment, I'm sweating. But uh, yeah, it, so we actually had another member from our team yeah. who is uh, a local mountain boy from our village here. So the beauty about him was why we took him on the race was because he has a great sense of humor. Like he could just use one particular thing and make you laugh the entire time. So we knew coming into the race, uh, such as Eco Challenge, we needed somebody to like make us laugh during the course or you know, have that great sense of humor because it was going to be stressful, like we all knew it. Yeah. So that actually helped us to like really keep it calm with team members. And you know, like things like we're, when we are trying to raise our sails and we are trying to use like a walking stick to like put the sails out so that we catch even the slightest wind. Like those <laughs> things were funny because it was almost like, wow, like as a team, we are discovering so much of our inner strengths together. Whether it was just taking a pole or walking stick to like keep the sails out, which we had no idea whether it had any benefit to it. But it was just these moments that were kind of fun to laugh at and experiment and fail at it and again laugh at it yet to like keep, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> keeping that, that positivity. Pull through that, you get to check, get into the check, get into the first checkpoint after your crazy amount of, of, of boat, like, you know, paddling, first yeah. ever time paddling as well. What was that, you know? <laughs> You get to this first checkpoint, you know, relief, like, how are you feeling? It was such a sense of relief. Honestly, like, I, you know, we had a moment, the two of us. So tell him either that you don't even give that command right. No, 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 no. That's the point. All right, do as you like then. We're having a moment. <laughs> the two of us are having a moment. Sometimes it's surreal to me what me and my twin have done together because uh, we're best of friends and worst of enemies. Like, oh, like on the thing, it's your fault, do this right and do that right. It's like, give me a break, man. I can make my own decisions sometimes. Even for the eco challenge when we were like deciding a team captain, she automatically became the team captain. Uh, I don't know how that happened. I wasn't happy. I wish I was. But uh, yeah, I can't believe she's still the team captain. It's hard to live with that. I have to take a breather. <laughs> it's a twin thing. <laughs> She's like, Nash, never again. Never, never again. But our fight only lasts about five minutes. And then we're best of friends again. Say that again. I heard it quite well, actually. Good. How, 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 taking how, no action. You, yeah, well, yeah. How was that for you, seeing that scene? I was quite surprised. I mean, when did that happen? Right? Yeah, like, when did that happen? How was I not to work? How was I not part of that interview? Like, what? You were left out for that bit. False. That is so false. I can <laughs> say that with guarantee. Like, so, why though? That's because I think going into the, the race, I felt like, you know, my team members and our dad collectively had decided to make me the team captain uh, because I was good with the, uh, with, uh, you know, technology and with communication. Like I remember going into signing up for Eco Challenge and the kind of documents that you had to fill in, like filling all that because that's behind the scenes. Like you don't really see, but every week we had to like follow up with documents, providing you know whatnot and all the safety measures and all the newsletters. So that's exactly what I'm saying. She by default became the team captain because she was obviously Ooh. doing bulk of the work, but majority of the team members voted me in. So I'm but then like, I was so hurt. Except for her, I, I think she was so the hurt. only one who didn't want me to be the team captain. Although like I have to pretend for the camera, like it was so good to have her as a team captain, but in my mind, but you know what? Heart, like, I'm going to share a secret here. I think I was really proud when like dad came to me in camp one. And he said that, Tashi, I must say that no matter how you got the title as a captain, 
but you really sort of uh, did justice and an honor to that title. So I was kind of very happy knowing that, hearing that from dad, because I know at that point he mattered uh, a lot during the race and hearing it from dad was like, okay, maybe I'm doing my job right. Like, you know, I, do, I don't need to worry about what the world has to say. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we kind of hype it a lot because it's a twin thing. And it's uh, like, even though we've always been together, you know, we've had this healthy competition and yeah. it's a part of who we are. So we, I think they kind of like just highlighted that through the race as well, that uh, even though, you know, like I said, our, our fights only last five minutes. It's also true. Like we could literally be at throat of each other, but then within five minutes, you're like, you, oh, you remember that like, thing we did? And then it always gets like to a normal conversation. Like, how did that happen? Because it's, so, <laughs> it's a twin thing. And we're so glad we can, you know, communicate with each other in that sense. It was like without actually omitting any words we can communicate. So, I mean, we, you know, this is sort of coming to the end of, of episode one. Like, you guys have what, done 12 hours or something worth of, of traveling more? You know, where are your heads at now? And you've got a lot of time to go. You know, you've still got another, like, nine days left. <laughs> oh, MG. We, we were so innocent. I mean, I remember, like, every leg we would cover, there was somebody or the other who would, you know, an interviewer someone who was like how's it been for you because i was like oh we can do this you know we uh we are slow but eventually we will cover up uh we'll you know we'll get to the finish line and uh we just i think the way you uh express yourselves even within the team and moving forward is the way the team is going to respond to so we were kind of like very positive uh upbeat about the whole uh, you know the the, the race yeah. and even like leading from the 16 like 11 hours of doing the paddling we knew that 20 kilometers was a jungle hike so yeah. we were absolutely stoked about it because all four of us are climbers and we were like okay nothing better than this leg so they had like these uh, interesting layovers in a way for us like for people like who can relate to a certain disciplines and then it just made it easier for us to accept more challenges and we're like okay getting going into this but by the way if you remember seeing the bend racing team on the top of the summit we saw them except we had no idea who they were <laughs> how do you get over that like obviously you've seen these people you've gone wow, this is serious. It was early on and someone's crumbling like that. How do you mentally go, do you know what? I'm still going to keep pushing on. Like, what is it that you, you know, how do you do that? It's extremely difficult. I'll be honest with you, it's extremely difficult. And I remember like even uh, uh, about half an hour from that point, I kept thinking about, will this, will this team have any assistance? Will somebody come and rescue them? Do they have their uh, radio, the sat call working enough to call for help? I was like thinking about all these things. But then eventually I was like, okay, so uh, the chances of us also going through a similar phase is super high because, you know, right now we've just done 0.1% of the entire race. And the truth is that we have to continue the space for the next whatever leg. So you kind of are putting your next big challenge in front of you to let go of the other. So you put like a bigger goal, a bigger thing in front of you and you're like, okay, I got to get to this goal and think less about what's happened or is around me. And, you, and it's different mantras for everybody. For me, the mantra is you think about the next checkpoint and think about your teammates and you keep pushing and you keep going uh, until you get to a point where you can actually reflect and be like, okay, maybe you just hope and pray that the other teams are okay. But at this point, you can't do much about it. So obviously at this point, you've gone through the walls already, you're wet, you're soaking wet. And bringing it back, because we're obviously Armadillo Marino and we're really proud to be, you know, the, the, the garment of choice. Like, how are you fair and how is that helping you at that point in time? Like, do you feel that there's genuine benefits compared to other garments that you've worn before? Uh, for sure. Like I said, you know, earlier we mentioned that we guys, our love affair with Armadillo started early on. And for us, it's always important to kind of, uh, you know, represent brands that we absolutely adore, like 100%. And for us, Armadillo does just that. It's, it's, it helped us so much during the race, whether it was, and you know, you kind of like, you would think it's a Merino, so you can't wear it on warm days, but the truth is you can, yeah. and it's odor free and it's like sweat proof almost. Like you don't feel like dirty coming out of an expedition. Initially, Tashi and I, whenever we came back from a long expedition, yeah. let alone Eco Challenge, where we also use the products, we just realized how comfortable this product made us feel. Yeah. Like we never felt like, oh my God, I wish we had another layer or I wish, you know, our fabric yeah. was a little better. It just did, did justice to the, the entire, you know, the, the comfortable aspect, the safety aspect of being on that race course with our material products. Our experience has been great. Yeah. Like, you know, we, like my sister said, we have never had a second thought about if we would have had a better product. Like it, it has suited us and that's why we can 
can 100% say that this is the best for us because yeah, we'll that's what we felt during the race. Like just wearing them made us feel like, yeah, this is helping, you know, like it's not giving us any problems. So I think it's also based on experiences you have and Armadillo has had, we have had a great experience with Armadillo so far. So it's been great to like sort of wear them. Yeah. Past that point now. So we're episode three, 30 hours in. Yeah. Still uh -huh. another seven days to go essentially. Yeah. And I bring it back to this each time because it's interesting to know where you are at each stage and if yeah. it kind of changes or if at some point you just go, <laughs> well, you know, we're here now it is what it is. Like we're just going to keep going. Or do, do every time you, you, because the first half, did yeah. you kind of go, Christ, there's still a long way to go. Yeah. Is that kind of what your mindset was? Like, how, you know, where are you at that point? So I think. Yeah, like looking at the the booklet that we used to receive and the maps that we kind of had, the maps were, I think, large. They were like huge. So we knew like every checkpoint is going to be farther than we expect because we had already experienced that. Yeah. You know, the moment we were like, oh, checkpoint two is probably going to be closed. Close. We were like, oh, no, this is definitely going to take us a while because we know what it takes to do one checkpoint. Mm -hmm. And it surely not, wasn't going to be easy on us mentally. But we knew like doing just one, getting to just one checkpoint, it was like our, our goal. You know, it was almost like the summit of a mountain because we knew if we made it to that checkpoint, then our ability to go on will become more. Like we would be able to, you know, progress. However, if we felt like, and by the way, I don't think until checkpoint, actually until before camp one, we kind of didn't even know we had a stopwatch. So our team was going into this race, thinking that we're going to take everything easy. You know, we're going to suit our health. We're gonna suit our physical ability and then just take every step as it comes. Until that one point when we were like, I think biking, that was a biking mm -hmm. leg. And we were just taking it so easy. <laughs> it was like hot and we were like dehydrated. So we were taking it easy. Yeah. And then we look at the time and some teams are like cruising, like cruising ahead of us. Yeah, I think it was that yeah, section there. there. But this is, this is, <laughs> I was obviously gonna talk about it. Look, this, here you are, like this is clips from you guys. Um, doing your biking section exactly as you said, and you guys have like not really done much mountain biking either. No, no, we received. I don't know if you heard that, but we received the mountain bikes two weeks before we're getting into the race, and uh, about one week of uh, training on the bikes. So zero experience. I actually ah. get exhausted just looking at the yeah. uh, footage. I honestly get exhausted because I, mean, I was. I got exhausted too. I'm sure the audience was just like, "Oh, I'm knackered. I can't watch anymore. I'm done for tonight." I think this was this section actually and you know I don't know but like here the challenge was our gears right like I, I don't know if you noticed but so because this was the first time and I keep saying that time and again is because we did not know what to expect and that's why when we were going for this mountain like uh, section we didn't even have the right gears like we actually packed a mountain bike gear for the next camp yeah. thinking that we're going to receive that before the like the biking, biking section yeah. so we left all our you know padded shorts and everything on the other camp like for dad to take it. So literally we were wearing like a skirt with no pads, like to support our, you know, uh, our seating on the bike. It was brutal. Like, oh my gosh, just going through that terrain with no proper gear and no proper equipment. Mm. I think that's where we felt like we did something really wrong. <laughs> like we knew in terms of our gears, we sucked because like obviously we didn't have anything. Yeah. On top of that, it did not support us in like, going through that section at all. Yeah, there were so many elements that were against us. Definitely. So many of them. And all then, of them, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, you're like, okay, it's not only you competing, it's not only about survival, but it's also about proper logistics and managing all of that. Mm -hmm. Like, where, when do you anticipate the bike leg and how do you prepare accordingly? None of that was in place yeah. for us. Well, yeah, felt so you're not really going to mountain bike or anything. And do you know what, actually, you're talking about that. So are, you, are your thoughts with that at all at this point? Because we, I, I didn't jump on it, but actually, because uh, we obviously see dad, we're seeing the different side of it, yeah. So let's have a look. I've got something here. So here's dad. Just <laughs> okay. so soaking, soaking wet. He's, this is obviously when the storm hits. So he's obviously just there, same with just a few other people. So waiting for you guys to come back. Isn't it funny? It kind of looks like, oh my God, my girls are in trouble. <laughs> it's like, can I get any piece of advice? Like, can I pass it on to my daughters at any point? Well, this is it. So Bear does a little speech. He gets everybody together and he goes, right, guys, this is normal. He puts everybody at ease. But you can see this is everybody there and people are there. 
where, yeah, I just thought, I'd, you know, thoughts with Dad at this point, because he was sort of powering through the rain as well, and I'm sure he's getting everything ready for you at this point. So um, I thought that that was pretty good. And do you know what? Like, we watched, um, seeing your dad, your dad, obviously, first of all, your dad's really cool. Yeah, and uh, there was something that he said that I really, really loved, um, because he goes on. So this is, this is our first encounter with Dad. He carries this as a personal weapon, and it is associated with valor, great determination, yeah, and never quit. This is my inspiration and my daughter's equally. I am the dad as well as the team assistant crew. <laughs> my job is really tough, balancing the job and being a father and being very concerned about uh, the daughter's safety. Being the first army officer in my village history, I achieved something impossible in my times. So when twin girls embarked on this journey of dreaming big, I said, don't limit yourself dreaming by night, dream by day. Dreams are free. The girls are very young still and they do not rationalize the dangers as much as I do based on my experience. But they have been through mountains, of course, uh, they have been particularly long expeditions, but nothing like this. So they are going to really, really push their boundaries. How do you think that's feeling at this point? Mm, wow. I'm sure dad is extremely stressed and worried about her safety, for sure. I am like 100% sure. Yeah. He's like, and especially it becomes a little more, I, I, it becomes more stressful when you see all the other teams just go by and then you're like, okay, my daughters have not even reached camp one where at a point all the teams, almost the majority of the teams have made it past. So I'm sure he's like, I hope they're safe. I know they, are, they, they were unprepared, utterly unprepared for the race. And he was quite sure of the elements that we were going to go against. Yeah. And he must be shit scared pooping in his pants for our safety you get to, to camp one um you know seeing dad for the first time you've been through 30 odd hours you know just just take me through that for you guys like where are we <laughs> oh my gosh i remember that's the point where i was saying like we literally were looking at our clock and all the teams were like cruising past us and then suddenly somebody looked at us and they're like team india we're like yeah they're like, why aren't you guys cruising? And we're like, why should we be worried? And they're like, no, because you have to be in the camp before four o'clock. And then we go like, what? Like there is a time that we had to like look at. And then that's when we like switched gears immediately. And then we were like, okay, now we need to paddle nonstop with no break in that heat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it was like, honestly, nothing that describes that moment. We knew we had a yeah. had a time limit there like we knew we had to make it at the point we had about i think 17 minutes left or something yeah yeah just you were all close. so yes. so close wow. to make it and actually to be honest if you ask the race organizers and everybody in the camp they said team india is out like yeah. basically looking at the distance we had to cover <laughs> and getting to the point they were like oh man colonel i'm worried about your daughters you know like i don't know if they're gonna make it then you were at the edge like you were at the edge, and i think sure. it was here where i called that to the to the side in his yes, head that's right and i told him that you know what like i had uh, just pre-race i started to have some issues with my knees and i was quite worried about that giving way during the eco race and you don't want to be that one person because of what and which the teams come out so i, I remember like having like this deep conversation i'm it's all being like tired and exhausted i was like i don't care about nutrition at this point but i want to let you know something i've really pushed myself a lot yeah. during the first few uh, legs in cp and i don't know how far i'll go beyond this but don't be surprised if i give up and that was also one of my fears is like letting go so early on in the race. I said, you know, we are mountaineers. And for us, our life is more important. There's a life ahead of us. So I'm not going to risk anything to never enjoy that part of my life. Like there's a lot at stake. Uh, but I just want you to know that I'm not going to give it, like I, I don't know if I can make it after this. But if I drop out, it's not because I want to, it's just because I want to preserve myself. Uh, you know, for me, I'm, as a mountaineer, it's important to kind of think about the future and uh, know that I come back in one piece and I was I was emotional I, I just like, remember telling him that you know I might be the person why the team comes out yeah. but I want you to know that I'm, I'm mentally very strong but physically I am giving up and it, it might play out in the next leg and if it ever happens like that don't like don't be disappointed because I truly care about the future I think that, that, to be honest, that is such an impressive thing to be able to do is to understand your limits physically because as much as yeah. you can have the mentality to continue, you need to be aware that, especially you're both young at the end of the day, you can't mm -hmm. break your bodies so early on 
because you're so determined to make, because there's, an, there's another race next year. You can enter if you want to do it again next year, but you have to because I'm assuming she needs to be captain this time. But, uh, you know. You, you, you know, people don't realize that if I, if I suffer a concussion or something, nobody else will feel that for me and nobody else will look after me. Uh, I, have, I have to take the entire responsibility of my body. And if I don't think I'm in a position that I can do that, you, you be vocal about it. Let people know. Because it's, it's easier to kind of be heroic and strong and kind of portray yourself as a, as a strong person even during the race. But it takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable. And I think at that point, I was not scared to be that side with my dad. Yeah, like, well done for getting this far, to be honest. <laughs> and I suppose, like, the, the crazy thing is as well, like, even at this point, I'm three episodes in. I'm three hours in and I've seen you a little bit. And I'm like, oh, this is quite cool. But you're 30 <laughs> hours in. You know, it's just, oh, I, can't even, I can't even begin to imagine what that would have been like. So I think, I you know, like I, I, go on, sorry. I was like, I knew we're kind of like, I can do this too. Oh, do you know what? The most, the most twisted thing is, yeah, the most, and I'll tell you this, yeah, and I'm going to put some of the blame on Bear for this, yeah. Yeah, I'll be honest, Bear <laughs> is getting some of the blame for this. Because I am clearly completely delusional in the first legs of this race, because I'm like, I want to do it. This looks like fun. Yeah, because we're not seeing it. And I'm like, yeah, man, I've watched enough Bear Grylls. I would survive this. I would, definitely. Yeah, so Bear Grylls has a big part to play in why I'm so delusional as to why I think I'd be able to take on this eco race. So if ever I was to enter, I'd be like, Bear, mate, this is on you. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that, yeah. I think most of us also felt that. He, even though he was coming out in helicopters and giving us this pep talk, we were like, you are the real star and we are so impressed and inspired by you that you give us the extra motivation to I think going. it was at one point we kind of started showing off to Bear like we have what it takes so it was almost like whenever Bear would come around we're like now we need to put our best feet forward Ooh, because now we have this. a hero looking at us from up above the skies so be the best version that you can be right now so it was it was kind of good moral booster as well like looking yeah. at him come around it was like oh Bear is watching like we need to push this like fast and quick and <laughs> Automatic. Yeah, so it wasn't when the cameras were on that you, you had your brave faces. This was when Bear was nearby. You were like, pretend that you're okay. We're fine. <laughs> we were like, we need more Bear, please. The, the, yeah. the, the team performance goes from like here to here. Definitely. Even for that like whatever moment that is there. But at that point, minutes. honestly, I don't think you're even conscious of the fact that there's somebody who's running. Let's say there are certain legs where the cameramen were running with us. I mean, kudos to them, seriously. Like, People may not know what it takes, but we have seen them run with us on the courses. And I can tell you, it's not an easy job. Like even to capture on us in our own elements, it's like big kudos, like seriously. You know, I mean, the fact that they had the capacity to do that physically themselves on certain legs, it was like commendable, like, you know, and falling off or like slipping and they were getting, they were getting hurt too, you know? So it was kind of nice to- Shout out yeah. to the camera, shout out to the camera crew then, definitely. Yeah. Ama amazing so far. I've enjoyed it and, and I'm sure the audience, like we've all enjoyed so much watching it and watching you guys. And I'm so glad to have learned so much more about it. Thank you guys for, for jumping on the call with me. I really enjoyed it. You were absolutely thrilled and excited, Matthew. And if you were doing the next, uh, the next one as well, uh, we were absolutely game. And this has been super overwhelming and nice. So there it is, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you hit subscribe and that bell button so you get notified on our next video. And leave a comment below. Is there something that you would want to ask the girls about the Eco Challenge? We're going to be speaking to them again, so we'll be able to ask those questions. Until next time.